So we've all done it. We're making this wonderful scene in Blender and everything's going great. The viewport's performant, things are shaping out looking amazing. And then we add foliage and everything goes downhill. Viewport performance slows to a crawl. Blender maybe even crashes. But what if I told you there's a way to fix it? That way is called proxies. In the past, there wasn't a great solution for proxies. But with how Blender handles geometry nodes now, there is a new solution that works amazingly. So let's take a look at this. Right now we have a very basic scene. Three low poly trees that you can get on BlendSwap and a camera. We also have it set up as a rendered scene so that it just looks nice. From here, what we can do is we can take a look at one of these trees and it, they look pretty good. They're actually decently low poly for what they are. The issue is that's still a lot of geometry to be rendering hundreds or thousands of times. So this is where a proxy is useful because we can take our high poly geometry and simplify it to lower poly geometry and then instantiate that lower poly geometry until we need to swap it out at render time. So how might we do that? Well, to start, what we can do is we can go ahead and open up geometry nodes. Then what we'll do is we'll click add new geometry nodes. This is actually gonna be a really small node network though, um, which is amazing. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and add a switch node. What's the switch node you might ask? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like, it's a switch. Depending on the state of this checkbox, it will pick between either the false or true geometry. If we check it right now, you'll notice our geometry disappears. Why? Because this true geometry doesn't have anything coming into it, so it's geometry. What do we want our proxy geometry to look like? We could set it to anything. We could set it to a cube, and that would yield us a cube versus our shape. But this isn't a very good proxy geometry because it doesn't actually represent the shape we're trying to model. A better way to do this is to use the convex hull. The convex hull effectively takes a shape and wraps a shell around it and makes that into the new geometry. And as we can see, when we actually apply this switch, this is the geometry we end up with. See how much lower poly this is? This is a much higher quality version of our original proxy, but is still low poly enough to be instanced many, many times. So now that we have our proxy geometry, we might ask, how do we not have to check this button every single time we want to render? Because that can crash Blender. We're going from a low poly scene to loading a whole bunch of geometry. Well, that's actually pretty simple with a new Blender property. And this is simply called is viewport. All this does is asks, are we in the viewport or are we in a render? And returns a Boolean value based on that. If we plug it in, we notice it selects our proxy geometry. So what do we do with this? Well, we could give this a nice test render. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll head over to the rendering view and we will hit render. And we'll notice our tree renders just as we would expect it to even though when we're in the viewport, it appears as the proxy convex hole geometry. So let's go ahead and cancel this and take a look at how we can also make this a little more useful because there are a couple issues here. In solid mode, it's pretty okay. But if we go into rendered mode, our tree is gone. And that's not great. So how do we fix this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We just need to add a material. So we can add a set material node and it brings our material back. If we want to give this color, we could, but for the sake of time, we don't need to. After we've done this, we actually have a really nice way of just dynamically switching our geometry on the fly, but we can do a little more to make this nice. What happens if we want to view our original geometry in the viewport? Well, this is going to get a little more complex, but we add a Boolean math operation. And all we're going to do is check that the condition of two booleans are true. If we see, now our geometry is back. But if we increment this, we're back to our proxy geometry. How do we make this look a little cleaner though? Right now it's just called boolean. Well, we can go into group and go to boolean. And we can just call this enable proxy. Once we've done this, now we have an easily toggleable value that we can use to switch whether we are using our proxy or our rendered geometry. 
So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and bring this over to our next two objects. That's pretty simple. All we do is when we have the copy attributes add-on, which comes with Blender activated, we can click on both of our trees and then click on the one with the proxy modifier on them and hit Control C or Command C. Then what we'll do is we'll simply hit copy modifiers. This will copy these modifiers to these original objects, but nothing's changed. And that's because we'll all notice that the enable proxy key is set to zero for them. We could actually change the default value of this enable proxy, but for now, let's just keep it as such. So now we have a bunch of high quality proxy geometry. Let's go back into solid view. With this, we now want to go ahead and go about generating a scene. So let's go ahead and test this out with Ant Landscape Generator to put this through a little bit of a torture test. We'll go ahead and just use the lakes preset as that will make things look pretty nice. Let's go ahead and scale it up. And once we're at a decent enough size, we can then look at how we want to frame our camera. That shouldn't take too long though. To fix this clipping that occurs, we actually can go into the camera properties and we can set the far clipping plane. Maybe set it to 10,000. Now we have a lot more room to play around with our camera. Now we have our scene kind of all built out. Let's go ahead and move our landscape collection out of the trees collection and hide our trees collection. Now our trees are just hidden so that we can just worry about instantiating them. Then we can add a new geometry node setup and maybe call this ground. So we want to add trees to this environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a distribute points on faces. And then we are going to add a instance on points node. With this, we now will have a, an ability to instance our collection. Let's drag our collection into our scene and check separate children. We can then drag this into instance and then simply add a random value set to integer for our instance index and check pick instance. We're going to notice it doesn't look amazing though. And that's because our geometry is just absolutely massive. So how do we fix this? Well, what we're going to do is we are simply going to shrink down our geometry pretty massively. So what we'll do is we'll add a transform node and then add a value node just so we can scale our geometry a fair bit easier. Point, let's try 0.01. That looks a lot better. We still want our original geometry back though. So let's go ahead and also add a join geometry and a group input node. Now we have a more complete looking scene. We can also go ahead and add some randomness to the scale by adding a random value set to float and maybe setting the minimum to 0.4 or something. From here, we can then crank the density. And this is where the power of the proxy approach comes in. I can add a thousand of these and we still have an extremely performant viewport. The minute though we start translating these proxies and turning them off, things will get slower and slower and slower until our viewport performance is absolutely terrible. The reason with this is Blender itself is actually capable of handling this amount of geometry. It's simply the workbench render engine that just can't handle this amount of rasterization being taken place. That also explains why when in rendered view, performance is much better. From here, what we need to do is we need to hide our tree collection again and worry about these trees that are underwater. What we're going to do is we're simply only going to instance on the points above a certain height. So what we will do is we will use a greater than node. This will take things that are only greater than something. From there, we can take our position and separate the X, Y, Z components of our vector. We will then take our Z and check to see if it's greater than a value and then use that to instance points. We can change this value, as you can see, to change the height at which something is allowed to instance. In this case, let's keep this at something like that. Now that we're here, what we can do is we can head back in and take a look at how it's rendering again. So let's go ahead and re-render this. Now we're going to notice it looks a ton better with landscapes only rendering where they need to. 
and still with extremely high quality, high poly trees. So where are the next steps from here? Well, the first thing we might be able to do is take a look at the water. Here's a tutorial I recorded earlier about how to handle high quality water within Blender. Additionally, we can go and add stuff like clouds and other geometry until we have a scene that we're happy with. Hopefully this tip helped you, and that's about all I have for you. Have a good one. Till next time.